In today's video, I'm going to explain to you exactly how you can get a free car with something called consumer law. But why should you listen to me? My name is Gibson and I have helped hundreds of regular people just like you rebuild and repair their credit using proven legal methods. You could go ahead and check out one of my client testimonials in the description down below. Plus I have a private community filled with a bunch of people filled with almost hundreds of people now who are looking to hack their credit just like you or inside of that private community, which right now you could get it for a completely free seven day trial. Inside of that private community, I'm gonna teach you exactly how to get yourself hundreds of thousands of dollars in business funding, how to get a 750, 800 plus credit score within the next 12 months and much, much more. So if that does sound interesting, again, you guys can get it for completely free for a limited time. After that, it's only about 20 bucks. I'm really proud of it. I have a lot of really great value. I try to make sure that it's the cheapest price. It's literally the cheapest price that I could set for the subscription thing that I used. I'm trying to educate everybody. It is time that everybody finally gets educated about credit because if you know anything, credit is so important. We have this big dogma against credit that we can't educate ourselves about credit that we can't talk about our personal finances that we can't do things to help fix our credit that we're not allowed to talk about these things we're not allowed to do these it is time to break these conventions and you guys can start today with that free trial so when someone talks about getting a free car and again i'm using free in quotes for a reason that i'll explain later in the video with consumer law what they're saying is that there are specific consumer protection laws put in place to protect you as a consumer. And when someone violates those protection laws, you are entitled to a full refund. So what consumer law are folks speaking about specifically when you watch videos about this? Because everybody locks this kind of information behind a course. So I'm gonna actually show you guys exactly what they're talking about in today's video and how you can implement it for yourselves. So if you want the method to work, make sure to watch this video all the way to the very end. Essentially what they're talking about specifically the actual specific law is US 15 code 1649 certain limitations on liability for any closed end consumer credit transaction that is secured by real property or dwelling that is subject to whatever a creditor or a signed creditor shall have no civil administrative or criminal liability under the subchapter and the consumer shall have no extended recession rights under this title. The creditor's testament for disclosure purposes of the taxes credited, the fees described, the fees and amounts refer to the third sentence, and borrower paid mortgage broker fees appear to this. And then this is the important part right here. Any disclosure relating to the financial charge with respect to the transaction if the amount or percentage actually disclosed may be treated as accurate for the purposes of this subchapter if the amount disclosed in the financial charge does not vary from the actual financial charge by more than $200. So essentially what this consumer law means is that if you are charged more than $200 than what you agreed upon for the transaction or the credit transaction for the loan or whatever, then the loan itself is unlawful. So let's make a hypothetical example. You go to a car dealership, you buy a Honda Civic for $16,000 and then you're doing monthly payments on it. If they over the course of those monthly payments, as long as you are in the right the entire time, AKA you've always paid on time, you agreed to everything and you are a good consumer on the other end. If they, for some reason, start charging you more fees on top of that, equaling more to than $200, then they are liable and the entire loan is null and void, which means that you are entitled to your money back. So what can we do with this? Because this is obviously a consumer protection law. The point of this law is to protect consumers from shady loans to make sure that consumers are actually being charged what they agreed to. And that's the important part. And this is why the idea of getting a free car with a consumer law is kind of bullshit, which I'll explain a real way to do it near the end of the video. But for the purposes right here, essentially what people say is that I've watched about 20, 30 videos about how to get a free car with consumer law. And every single one of them is some stupid variation of like, oh, uh, you can like use this law because they won't actually tell you the real thing and then you get the loan for free and a free car. That's not what happens. Because again, under the laws, you have to be aware of every part of the loan. You have to be aware of the down payment, the, ver the interest, if it is variable interest, about the term of the loan. You have to be aware of everything. You have to be aware of the, you have to have agreed to all of that. 
That doesn't mean that you as the consumer have to actually really recognize it. So every single loan bureau is required to essentially do that box thing that you've seen. So when you see that box thing, when you apply for a credit card where it says, okay, this is going to be your percentage. This is going to be what the minimums are. This is your annual, this is your annual fees. This is all this shit. Essentially that is required by law and that's required by law for every single loan. So you know exactly what you're getting into as the consumer. What this law states is that if the loan that you wrote is inaccurate, what this law states is that if the loan that you are paying is inaccurate to what you agreed to, to more than $200, then the whole loan is null and void and you are entitled to get a refund. Now, does that ever happen? I don't think it does. Honestly, car dealerships, home auto loans, they're done with automated systems these days and they know the law, they hire professional lawyers that have way more experience in the legal department than you or me does. And I guarantee you for a fact, they take things like this into consideration and they're not stupid enough to risk the entire thing of the loan against this. Now what they get you on, and this is how people see consumer law and they think they can get away with this is because a lot of loans will have variable interest depending on how much you miss the payments. So let's say you miss three months of payments on this car loan for 18,000. What'll happen is that this car loan, what'll happen is the interest rate of this car loan will say started at 6% will now raise to 12% because you missed those payments. Now on the contract that you sign relating to the loan, they have to say that, but they do not have to include that info in that little box that you see. So whenever you agree to a credit card or agree to a loan, it's always kind of important to make sure that you read through it and go to the bottom a little bit and make and see where it says missed payments or variable interest because they are required by law to state it. And again, if for some reason, I guess they don't abide to the specific rules and you can kind of work that out, then yeah, you can get, then you can sue them. You can file a police report because they're breaking the law. But in most cases, it's really, really hard to abuse this because at this point, car dealerships, mortgage offices, wherever you're trying to do this, they're smart enough to know what their rights are and what your rights are and have found better ways to manipulate you. It's kind of like how you can't really fake debt with zombie debt anymore, but essentially, well, what are we gonna do? We still want the free car, right? And I'm not gonna bullshit you, there is a way to do it. I'm gonna teach you in a little bit, but we can't obviously use this method now because it's hard to make the consumer law method actually happen now. So instead what we gotta do is we gotta do something called authorized data. Essentially what authorized data is, is when you put on a loan of any kind or a thing onto your credit. Authorized data is used by every single bank, every single financial institution to add things onto your credit. This is how they do it, it's called authorized data. And in order to get approved for authorized data, you have to prove yourself as a loan officer in, in some category. Now to give a little bit of sauce about this, what is gonna be the easiest way to do this? In my opinion, in order to add authorized data, what you could do is that you could create a personal loan. So essentially this is a loan that's written by you to a business, a separate business that is in a state like Connecticut that protects the privacy of the owner. So unless the business gets audited by the IRS, it's essentially impossible to know who actually owns the business and you can just do an LLC for this. So what you would do is that you would write a car loan for this business that you may or may not own in this state where it's locked and you know, nobody can get access to it. You then give that credit onto the business that you started that, oh, never mind. You didn't start this. This is just a random business that's over there that you decided to write a personal loan for. And then you report that as authorized data on the business's side. And then what you do as the business is that you get a business loan for a car and the bank will pretty much auto approve you because you already have a loan on this business. You know, this business wants to go and get a car now. So they apply for a loan and then because the bank pulls what's called a dumbbiss, which is a business credit score essentially, they pull that and they see, oh yeah, this business has already had a car loan that is paid off. We can now loan them whatever car we want. And usually they're gonna get approved if the amount for the loan is about 50% of what the next thing is. So if you're gonna get a $100,000 car loan, you have to, essentially the business should have reported about a $50,000 car loan. I don't know, you could use my credit repair services and we'll go ahead and wipe it off for you. And then boom, just like that. And you don't have to do this with the business either. You could just do it on your personal credit. So you could essentially, if you know somebody who works in car loans, you can have them authorize data you a $50,000 car loan. You take out a $100,000 car loan. You keep the car for three months, the car gets repossessed. And then you go ahead and DM me on Instagram, which I do credit repair for people. I've done it for hundreds of different people. I know what I'm doing. I can get anything off your credit, bankruptcy, missed payments. And we are also compliant with the credit repair services 
Services Act, and we will give you a refund within 30 days for whatever reason, because we are compliant. And then you can go ahead and get it wiped off your credit, repeat the same process, and that's how you can have a free car. Now, if you want specifics on how to avoid things like down payments, what loans you should get, which trade lines, I keep all of that info inside of my private community where I have a full guide on how to get basically unlimited business funding. I also have a full guide on how to get yourself a huge personal credit score. And I'm also working on a full guide to what's called credit churning, which is essentially getting credit cards and then spending on their limit to only get the rewards and then you guys can cash out. I'm currently making about $2,000 a month from just credit churning because I'll open these cards I'll take all the offers and then I'll close them and then I'll wipe it off my credit report and then I'll do it again. Because fun fact, your credit report is as editable as your TikTok handle because a credit report is not a financial document. You can get whatever you want wiped off your credit report, no questions asked, because a credit report is run by private businesses. It's not a government thing. It's not like lying on a bank application or a police report where that's actually illegal, don't do that. I have a method if you wanna wipe stuff off your credit report that we can use or that's in the private community. That's not a police report to report fraud, but it can't talk about that on YouTube. You guys can check that out there. Seven day free trial. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope that you have a good day and I'll see you later.